Praise the Lord, Family Life Center. Praise the Lord, Lifeline. Is there anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I said, is there anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? If you're happy to be in the house of the Lord today, why don't you shout and give God a hand praise this morning? Hallelujah. I found myself at home getting ready for this, for this service, and I, I began to read in, in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts where two men found themselves shackled in a prison, Paul and Silas. And I, as, as I began to, to read the word of God, I, I, I started asking the Lord, what is it, Lord, that you have or you want me to say to the church? And I want to tell you today that a lot of us find ourselves like Paul and Silas. Allow me to show you, Brother Jared, come here. You come to church and you find yourself looking like this. Do you see this? You find yourself shackled. You find yourself shackled with chains of emotion. You find yourself shackled with pain. Some of you, find, some of you are shackled with addiction. Some of you are shackled with worry. But the Lord has sent me to tell you something. The Lord wants me to remind you that if you could just think about Paul and Silas, if you could just think about Paul and Silas, better yet, look at the clock. It's after 12. I said it's after 12. If you could just put that in your memory and begin to praise me. Begin to praise me. I said begin to praise me. Begin to worship me. If you could just begin to do that, I'll cause these chains to fall off. I'll cause these chains to fall off. These chains to fall off. Is there anyone tired of these chains? I said, is there anyone tired of these chains? What do you say we praise them? What do you say we praise them? That's the only way they're gonna fall off. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Yeah. Come on. Mountains move! Praise him a little bit. 
Now that the chains are off, if you don't want your chains to come off, just don't break them. But now that your chains are off, I want you to, I want you to lift your hand and put the chain in the air. Last night, give me some room. I want you to do what I'm gonna do. I want you on the count of three to throw your chain towards last night. I'm gonna throw my chain towards last night. And they're gonna dance upon these chains. One, two, one, two, three, do it last night, let's go. It's getting ready to happen. 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 It's getting ready to happen.
getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It already happened. 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 It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready to happen. It's getting ready. That's it. Lift your hands. Here we go. Lift your voice. You know, I thank the Lord that when I don't have anything to offer him, it's been so good to me that I, I have nothing to offer him. I don't know if you've ever felt that way. Lord has done so much in your life. And yet you have nothing to offer him. But I thank him that I, I serve a God that even though I may not have much to offer him, he'll receive my worship. He'll receive my worship. I just want to tell you this morning, you don't have anything to offer the Lord. Give him your worship. And he'll accept it. Because he loves you. Worship you for me, for all the things you've done for me, and no one can worship you for me. Here's my worship, all of my worship. All of my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive my worship. All of my worship. Sing it to the Lord. Sing it to the Lord. you done for me.
no one can worship you for me. Here's my Clap your hands to the Lord this morning. 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence, Lord. Thank you for breaking those chains, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take it. It's good to praise the Lord on a Sunday afternoon. Amen. There's nothing like breaking a sweat in, in the house of the Lord. Nothing like seeing changed men worshiping the Lord. I thank the Lord for that. We're going to get ready to pick up our tithes and our offerings. I'm going to ask the ushers to begin to get ready. How many are you ready to praise God with your giving today? Amen. I said, how many of you are ready to praise God with your giving today? You know, we don't just, we don't just praise God in song, but we also praise God with our giving. And uh, I love this church because our pastors taught us that we don't, we don't give to the Lord because we need to. We give to the Lord because we want to. Our pastor, uh, we've discovered the secret that if you give to the Lord, the Bible says that he'll open up the windows of heaven. And pour out a blessing that you don't even have room enough in your house. How many of you believe that this morning? Believe it in your heart. And see us just come forward. Lifeline brought back from midnight cry, but whew, that's that's powerful. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The powerful presence of the Lord here. I'm gonna ask you to stand, church. I'm gonna leave this pulpit to a man that I I love with all of my heart. A man who's not only a pastor to me, but a friend and a mentor. A man who is never, never too busy when you need him. And I just, I just want to remind that to the church that we are blessed with a pastor that instantaneous there for you, regardless of the time, regardless of where. And I thank God that there are so many like that in our church. Amen. Please welcome our pastor, Arthur Artigas. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Man, it's good to be in God's house. And we're, thank God that we're here today. Can somebody say amen? Praise the name of the Lord. We just give God the honor and the glory for those that had COVID but now are back. Thank you. Thank God. Amen for you. Praise the Lord. Those that went to midnight cry, God bless you. And that were able to make it back. Praise amen today. 
and be here the, and join us in the house of the Lord today. God bless you. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and just tell him, praise the Lord. Amen. From wherever you're at. Amen. Tell him, God bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We just give God the glory and the honor that we can, we can lift up holy hands and we can lift up our voices unto the Lord and just praise his name because he is worthy. Can somebody say amen? In his presence there is fullness of Florida Sul message, I mean, per se, 
nonetheless we wanted to take advantage one more time here this year before we have to turn in all our amen all our funds amen for the for the mission field amen the Florida Sul department we wanted to pick up one more offering and so we're going to be doing that at the end of the service so don't nobody leave amen and amen and uh, stay here and contribute and be a blessing amen to the mission field can somebody say amen let, let me say this Amen. You might not be able to preach the gospel in Africa or some other continent or some other country, but the Lord has blessed you. Has he blessed you? Amen. The Lord has blessed us, hasn't he? Absolutely. Blessed us in a mighty way. And he blesses us so that we can be a blessing. Not so we can just, nos quedamos con la bendición. And no, 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 man, only my four and nothing more. No, no, senor. That's not the way it goes, brother and sister. Amen. God blesses us so we can be a blessing to, to those that are less fortunate than us or that need our help or so that we can further the gospel somewhere in the world even though we can't be there ourselves but we can contribute. And somebody say amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And we just thank the Lord because we're going to celebrate that today at the end of the service. But at this time, we want to get right into the word of the Lord. Amen. And we're glad to have one of our assisted pastors, Brother Bobby Moya, we want him to come and preach to us whatever the Lord has laid in our brother Bobby. Faithful and just. the men of God, the First Lady, their family, but I just want to say uh, I honor Pastor because he's a strong man. Whatever gets thrown his way, whatever goes his way, he pushes through and he shows. He don't budge, he fights back. And, I, and we are privileged to be under a pastorship like our beloved Pastor Arthur L. Diaz. I wonder if we just could give the Lord a good round of applause for our pastor because we have a strong man over this church because we're not a weak church we're a strong church and we need a strong man to guide us and instruct us the word of God we honor all the missionaries here those that are out there working hard to bring forth the gospel to those because there's people out there in the uttermost parts of the world that need to be delivered as well, that need to hear the name of Jesus, that need to be saved, delivered, and set free like we were. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Without any further delay, we're going to get right into the word of the Lord because I know somebody's going to get delivered here today. I know somebody's going to get set free. Because that's what the word and the presence of God does, is that he does the miraculous in our lives. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Book of Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Hallelujah. The Bible reads as follows. Now, the spirit speaketh expressly. Has anybody ever expressed himself? What's taking place inside you that allows you to want to just express yourself? And he says that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Teaching us. That denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Can somebody say amen? And for a few moments, I'd like to uh, preach or teach whatever the Lord has deposited in my heart for us here today. Is apostolic doctrine 
Salvation is by grace. Salvation is by grace. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, for this great privilege to be here today. We feel your spirit moving, God, and we ask, Lord, as you have prepared our hearts, let it land on good ground. Because we want to be sensitive to your voice, sensitive to your touch, Father. Because we want to grow in this apostolic doctrine in which you brought us to. We love you and we thank you. Bless us here today, God. We don't want to walk out the same, but we want to walk out stronger, more knowledgeable of your word. We love and we thank you in Jesus' name. Give them a good round of applause to you today as you may take your seats, praising the almighty God because he is a good God. Can somebody testify that our God is a good God? Look around you. Analyze your life. Look at your past. See where he delivered you from. And you're going to realize that he has been good. As we see here, if you put up that scripture for me, please, on um, Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. You guys just be patient with me here today as I lay a foundation. The Bible says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So that that brings us salvation has appeared to us. It is where God manifested himself in flesh. Now we understand that we're in this apostolic doctrine. One thing we must know is what does the word doctrine mean? How many of us truly understand the word doctrine and what it means, what it stands for? Doctrine means it's a principle. What it means is it's a position in our beliefs. That's what doctrine means. A principle or a position in our belief. And what is our principle? That is found in John chapter 3 verse 5. It says here in John chapter 3 verse 5. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And that is our principle, saints of God. Is that for in order for us to enter into the kingdom of heaven, we must have been born again of both the water and of the spirit by the name of Jesus the Christ. Can somebody say amen? That is our doctrine that we stand upon. That is our belief that we run with. Because that is what God has given revelation about. Now we understand that when Jesus had his followers, he was teaching them. He was instructing them. For there were disciples. What disciple means is that they're students of a teacher. They're being taught. Come real quick, hermano. They're being taught. And as they're being taught, they're, they're, Jesus was walking and showing them. This is the way you pray and you heal for people. As he was walking, the teacher was walking, he was saying, this is the way you lay hands on the sick and they're all going to recover. When Jesus was walking to the other cities, he was saying, you see this woman that they're stoning her because of her sins? This is the way you forgive a sinner instead of stoning, uh, stoning a sinner. Come and follow me. Let me show you how to pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Gracias, hermano. And that is what Jesus did to his disciples. He taught them. He showed them the importance of following him. Following the maker and the lover of your souls. This is why we were disciples when we decided to get baptism classes. So we could get down into the waters and come out a new creature. A new disciple of the Lord. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited that my God called me and told me to follow him. Because I used to follow seducing spirits of the world. I used to follow the lies of this world. I used to follow those that would try to guide me and instruct me to live a life recklessly. But when I came to an apostolic church, I heard the word of God. And I felt his hand upon me. And he said, my son, you no longer have to follow the doctrine of devils. But you can follow the doctrine of the apostles of Christ. And this is where the disciples became apostles. Because they did not just stop there. 
Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 and 2. The Bible tells us here, therefore, listen very closely. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying of the hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of the eternal judgment. Give me that next uh, uh, version, my brother, so we could go ahead and give us a little better more of understanding here. The book of Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. It tells us, therefore let us leave the elementary doctrine and go to maturity. Not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead. Works and of faith towards God. Just leave it there for me, my brother, please. What it is letting us know here? He's letting us know that in the beginning when we were baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the Holy Ghost, it just does not stop there. He is letting us know that as babes in the Lord, as we come out as a new creature, it is time for us to get to work. Ain't no longer just being taught by the teacher and being shown what it is to be saved by the name of Jesus and by the waters and of the spirit. But it is time for us to start seeking and growing and maturity in God. In what? We must grow and understand our doctrine, our principles, or what we believe in. We call ourselves apostolics, but what is it to be an apostolic uh, a disciple of the Lord? It is not to stay in the elementary. It is not to stay as an infant. But it is to grow in the word of God and in the power of his might. It is to understand that we must go through maturity. Because when we go through maturity, we find out perfection. We find out who is the one that is perfect. And that is our master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the one that is perfect. He is the one that helps us in the times of need. When struggles come our way and problems fall on our lives, we know that we have grown in the word of God and we can stand upon our own two feet. No longer am I being fed in my mouth. No more am I just drinking milk. But I know what it is to eat some meat in the word of God. And whatever comes to attack my belief, I can stand strong and know that for my God I live and for my God I die. No matter what lies trying to come before me. Where are my apostolic believers at? Spiritual infancy is a lack of growth after the new birth. We show concern with self rather than service. That is spiritual infancy. That is what he's letting us know. We got to come out of that. We got to continue learning. When the disciples were on the boat and Jesus told them, hey, let's go to the, uh, we're going to go to the other side. And as they were in the process to the other side, a storm came their way. But Jesus had already given them the word. But what happened? They were scared because they didn't want to die. They were concerned with themselves, with their own self needs, not knowing that Jesus was already on the boat. That is a spiritual infancy. That is a baby in the Lord. Like many, many of us had just came to God. We understood that, hey, I don't want to die. But when we started learning and understanding the word of God and hearing his instructions, we understood one thing. That my God is always with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. But he will be with us all the way to the end. Don't stop now, my brother. Don't stop now, my sister. Don't give up now. I know you may feel like you're all alone in the middle of a storm but my word the word of God the apostolic doctrine that we stand on says that my God will never leave you nor forsake you he will be with you all the way to the end we argue rather than action when we're spiritual infants in the Lord, we want to argue and argue instead of saying, you know what, instead of fighting against my brother, uh, instead of fighting against everybody else, uh, I'm going to apply the word of God in my situation uh, that's going to give me understanding how to deal with the matter. Because many times we want to take upon things our own selves 
and we just create more of a mess. When all we need to do is open up the word of God and understand that we need revelation and adjustments uh, in our character, uh, in our emotional life, uh, life uh, adjustments and the way we see things with our physical eye. Saints of God, there is much more for us to learn and to do. But we cannot learn more and do more if we continue to be fed with a spoon in our mouth. Book of James chapter 1 verse 22, the Bible says, Be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. What is he telling us here? Don't just hear the word because that's the way we began in the beginning, saints of God. When they told us, hey, what is it, what is it that we believe in? When they told you, hey, what is it that you got to do to be saved? We heard the word. We heard the instructions of righteousness of the word of God. And we believed. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. But it does not stop there no more. We cannot just be hearers all the time of the word of God. It is time for us to apply what God has given us for our lives. Uh, apply the word that God has given you for your children. Uh, apply the word that God has given you for your family. Uh, because that is the apostolic doctrine. Uh, it's not a self selfish uh, uh, apostolic doctrine. Uh, but it's a doctrine that we know what it is to give uh, and to serve uh, and to help uh, and to instruct uh, and to give back uh, and to be thankful. Uh, this is why he tells us, don't you to be hearers uh, because if you're just hearers of the word of God, uh, you're not going to do what the word of God says uh, and you're going to deceive your own selves. Uh, why? Because as I opened up today uh, with the seducing spirits, uh, those seducing spirits are going to come after us. Uh, but if we take heed to them, uh, we're going to be deceived. And we're living in times, saints of God, where we got to be students and doers of the word of God. Because the attacks are real. How do you say, my brother? When we began in the Lord for many of us, when we started off following Christ, how many soldiers were marching with us? How many soldiers were marching next to us? How many soldiers were we fighting the good fight of faith with? And as we look around, are they here today? Do they find themselves still lifting up their hands? Do they find themselves still worshiping the one true God? No, they've been deceived. They've been deceived by seducing spirits. Spirits uh, and doctrines of devils. Uh, but I thank God uh, that there's still some apostolic believers in this place. I said, I thank God that there's still some hallelujahs, uh, holy rollers, uh, devil chasers, uh, devil stompers uh, in the house of the Lord uh, that don't budge in their faith. Uh, even though your husband left the faith, uh, even though your children left the faith, uh, even though your spouse left the faith, uh, even though you were hit with infirmities in your bodies, uh, you stood strong upon the rock and the foundation, uh, and that is Jesus our Christ. Can somebody say amen? Where is our belief at here today? Where do we find ourselves at here today? Because if it wasn't for his mercy, if it wasn't for his grace, where would we have been at, saints of God? Because it was his grace that was upon our lives. Before we came to the Lord, how were we living? How were we thinking? But he stretched forth his loving arms and into the enemy's camp. And sometimes he might have just weeded out people because he looks for true worshipers. He looks for true believers. They're going to worship him in spirit and in truth. 
And maybe he had to go through the weeds a little bit and the tear, and he had to choose you because he knew, saints of God, that through you, generations and generations, we're going to get taught this doctrine that we believe in, saints of God. It does not stop with you. It begins with you. It begins the way you worship. It begins the way you praise. It begins the way you live for God. It begins the way you apply the word of God. It begins the way you preach to your children, uh, preach to your friends, uh, preach to your co-workers uh, who you are in God. Uh, you are an apostolic believer in God. Uh, and they got to see that in you. Uh, God did not call you to another belief. Uh, God did not bring you to another movement. Uh, he did not take you to a tarot reader. Uh, he did not take you to a comadre. Uh, nobody quebró un huevo, limpió un pollo, lo tiró en los traques. Uh, no, uh, he brought you uh, to a place of revelation. A, a place of oneness, a, a place of Jesus' name, a, a place of filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. A, he didn't take you nowhere else, a, but he brought you to the place a, where the power of God rests is upon. Yo reconozco quién es mi Dios, que reconoce aquí en este día, quién es tu Dios, a quién alaban, a quién glorifican. I worship and I praise the one true God, the one true God that healed my body and made me whole. But if it wasn't for his grace, I would have been lost forever. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 10. The Bible tells us, for by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Verse 9. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Not hear them, but walk in them. Applying it, living it. Go back to verse 8, please. But listen what he tells us. He says, for, for by grace you are saved through faith. But look at, and not that... It, and that not of yourselves, but it is a gift from God. He gave us this gift. How many of us are going to be receiving gifts and leaving it there without opening it? Because if you're doing that, give it to me, I'll open it. Especially the envelope ones. Saints of God... This is a gift from God that we got to open up, look at it, use it, apply it, recognize that when someone gives you the gift, it's because they love you. They love you. He loves you. <laughs> he loves you. Were you deserving of a gift? Were you deserving of a gift? But yet he found it somewhere down deep inside his compassion and his love towards us to give us a gift because he understood uh, that my child is not forever going to be living recklessly. My child is not going to be for living ever over there lost and confused. Uh, but this gift that I'm going to give them, uh, they're going to open up and their eyes will illuminate and find a revelation uh, of who Christ is. Somebody ought to give him a hand of applause here today. My God, if it wasn't for God's gift in our lives, the gift of the power of the Holy Ghost, how many of the serpents would be trampling upon us? Can somebody say amen? But listen, let's go on to the next scripture, please. Well, which is verse 9. This is the one I want to touch upon because this is what happens, saints of God. The Bible says, not of works, lest any man should boast. Go to verse 10. Sorry. 
For we are, the wor- we are for his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. He says, for that any man not sh- they shouldn't boast. Why? Because for some reason, saints of God, as believers, as in the Lord, as we take time, we start to boast. We start to show that, you know what, I made it this far. We belong here because we earned it. Look at what I'm able to bring to the house. Look at what our talents that I have. Look at the way I could preach. Look at the way I could sing. Look at the way I could make tamales. Y tortillas hecho a mano. Y pupusas. I'm looking for the pupusa makers. That's the one I'm looking for. <laughs> but look at me. I know how to dance. I know how to shout. I dress nice. No, we did not earn this. This was a grace that was applied upon our lives. This is why we are here today. We are his workmanship. Meaning he is working still on our lives. Just because God has blessed you and put you in a position. God has blessed you with a good job. God has blessed you with a beautiful wife. A beautiful, well not say beautiful husband. But a a husband with beautiful children. My God, it doesn't mean that you earned it. Stop acting like you earned everything that you have right now. Because that's the way that we come into the house of the Lord. Oh, the preacher has to make me shout. Oh, the The singers have to make me dance. My goodness, the grace of God to your salvation alone. You should be grateful and thankful and have a shout unto the Lord. But it all began with me being taught this apostolic doctrine. I wouldn't have been having my wife and my children. If it wasn't the day that I was brought to Lifeline Outreach uh, and was being taught the word of God uh, as a disciple of the Lord. uh, Six years uh, was I discipling uh, in the Lord uh, until one day he said, it's time for you, brother, to get your blessing. uh. You've been discipling for quite a while. uh, And some of you, it's time to get your blessing. uh. You've been discipling for quite a while. uh, And my God has blessings for you. uh, But you got to step up and step out uh, and believe in the doctrine of the word of God who wants their blessing here today who's looking for God to take you to that next level because in that next level there's going to be bigger devils but as long as you know you believe in apostolic doctrine they got nothing on you baby you got all the power and authority that you need in God Can somebody say amen? Grace gives us a new life which is not condemned by God. Through God's grace we are forgiven, transforming our thinking, resulting in the renewal of our mind and heart. We're going to see an example of God's grace. Book of Luke chapter 23 verses 39 and 43. An example of God's grace. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And one of the male factors which were hanged railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the the other answering rebuked him saying, Does not thou fear God? Seeing that thou art in the same condemnation, because they were condemned. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man had nothing amiss. And Jesus hearing, he said, and, and, and he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest in thy, into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, verily I say unto thee, today. Shall thou be with me in paradise? An example of the grace of God. How many of us were a criminal in this world? I'm sorry, I'm just speaking to lifeliners here and myself. How many of you were doing wrong things in this world? 
Because criminal sounds a little bit offensive. Oh, no, mi hermano, yo, criminal. No, brother, ¿cómo crees? Nomás tomaba, nomás hacía drogas, es todo lo que hacía. Robaba nomás. How many of you were deserving of the mercy of God when you were out there lost and confused, running around, messing around? But my God looked at you when you were hanging on the cross and said, from this day on forward, I'm going to take you to a place, a place where they're going to be preaching apostolic doctrine. Because because you're no longer going to go to the place of damnation. Uh, but you're going to go to a place of streets of cold. Uh, I'm talking about saints of God. The mercy and grace of God. Uh, that he had on the criminal. Uh, because these criminals. Uh, they were being judged by the law. Uh, but if you live by the law. You're going to die by the law. But my God did not come to bring the law. He said he has come to come bring grace. Uh, because it is his grace that we need. Uh, because I am a sinner. Uh, I make my mistakes saints of God. Uh, I don't have a perfect life. I fall short of the honor and glory of God. But I know that my God is gracious and merciful to forgive me. He is just and he is here today to wash away those sins of us here today. He is here to cleanse us and to purify our hearts that we be able to lift up holy hands in the sanctuary. Because sometimes the sins of the world, the sins of the flesh, wants condemnation to fill us, they fill us with guilt. Like one of these criminals, he says, hey, hey, we're being condemned for what we have done. But listen, this man is just, he didn't do nothing wrong. And this is what happens with the sin, that sin wants to bring condemnation upon us when the word of God says there is no condemnation upon those who are in, are in Christ Jesus. Because we live by grace, not by the law. And we got to be very careful, saints of God, here today, what we believe in our doctrine. Because there is an attack going on here today. It could be happening within these four walls. It could be happening uh, within amongst us. Uh, we do not live by anything else but by under the grace and the mercy of God. Uh, there is no law that we live by, saints of God. Uh, we do not stand by that because that is what's going to take us to condemnation. Uh, in book of Romans chapter 6 verse 14, my brother, put that up for me, please. Uh, the Bible says, this, for, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Uh, for ye are not under the law but under grace. Uh, and when you are under grace, uh, you have the dominion over the sin. Uh, you have the authority over the sin. Uh, but if you want to live under the law, the law is going to judge you. Uh, the law is going to take you to a place uh, where no, you know what, guess what? Uh, you don't deserve it uh, because of all the evil and sin that we have done. Uh, but when you're under the grace, God will look at you and say, uh, my sins be forgiven, my son. Uh, just turn around, repent, and don't do it again. Uh, my God will have mercy and grace and will forgive you of all your sins. But you got to be able to come to an apostolic altar and say, my God, I open up my hands. I open up my heart. Cleanse my hands, God. Forgive me of my hidden sins, Lord. I don't want to be condemned, Lord, but I want to have your mercy and your grace. I want to enter into paradise and to be in your presence, almighty God. He says, for, for sin shall have dominion over you. What does dominion mean? Dominate. The root word is dominate. That means have a commanding influence on. Or exercise control over. What has dominion? What has commanding word over our lives? What is it that controls us? Because that, whatever it is that controls us, that has dominion over us, that sin, that area that we struggle, it's going to keep you bound and chained. But my God is here today to let us know that we live by grace. That we must come and just cast our cares upon the Lord. For he is faithful and just to what? To forgive us of our sins, saints of God. 
for all you those who are heavy laden. Our rest is not in the law. Our rest is in the grace of God. This is why we got to know who we are in Christ. Because when you want to have the doctrines of devils kind of come and call, give you a phone call or text you or message you through Instagram and Facebook and all those social medias uh, to give you scriptures of this and that. Uh, be careful, saints of God, uh, because we do not live by the law, uh, but we live under grace, saints of God. Uh, that's who we are. It wasn't the law that brought me to the apostolic altar, uh, but it was the grace of God that was applied on my life uh, when he told me, uh, oh, he he could forgive me. Huh? When he told me, ah, I could wash you away the sins. Huh? When he told me, ah, it's okay. I know you're struggling, but come on. Huh? Because a righteous man will fall seven times, but he's going to get back up. Huh? This is having God in your life. Huh? You're not alone, saints of God. Huh? You're not battling alone, saints of God. Huh? You have a Lord with you. Huh? Lean on God. Huh? Depend on God. Huh? Trust in God here today. Book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19, the Bible tells us here, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and, and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is what happens when you are not under the law, but you're under grace. He gives you dominion, dominion to trip on any evil things that want to come and attack your families. Any evil things that wants to come and bring confusion. Confusion. Uh, he will give you the authority to dance upon him the way the brothers were dancing on the chains here today. Uh, and I know there's some of you uh, that have chains upon you right now. Uh, there's some of you uh, that are struggling with things right now. Uh, you will got to walk out with those chains on you. Uh, you can come to this altar and throw them on this altar and watch you dance upon the chains uh, that had you controlled, uh, that had you all lost and confused. Uh, that's upon the problem uh, that you look too big. Uh, that's upon the problem that controlled you too much uh, because there's nothing too big or too much for my God. Uh, my God is bigger than any problem uh, that comes my way. My God is bigger than any, any habits that I may have. Uh, all we gotta do is understand who you are in God. Uh, you are a Jesus name believer. Uh, you are a holy roller uh, and you are here today uh, to tread upon the serpents and the scorpions uh, that are coming after your family. Uh, that are coming after your marriage, uh, that are coming after your finances, uh, that are coming after your children. Uh, my God will give you all the power you need for your enemy. Uh, the enemy that's coming to attack you in the middle of the night. Uh, the enemy that attacks you with migraines. Uh, the enemy that hurts your body and afflicts you with sickness. Uh, the enemy that wants to take you out of the will of God. Uh, my God has given you that authority. Uh, the authority of an apostolic uh, worshiper, uh, an apostolic fighter, uh, an apostolic believer. Uh, an apostolic dancer, uh, an apostolic runner. Uh, I'm talking about exercising the power of God in your life. Uh, you got to exercise it. Uh, don't be uh, just a hearer. Uh, be a doer of the word of God. Uh, how many of you I came today to do the word of God in your life? Uh, and that is by admitting uh, that you don't have it all together. Uh, and that you need to lift up your hands. Uh, and that you need to open up your mouth. Uh, and that you need to worship the one true God uh, that had mercy on your life. Uh, when you were walking around lost. Uh, when you were walking around all messed up, uh, you had no direction in life. Uh, you know you don't know if you were going or you were coming. Uh, you were all messed up from the feet up. Uh, but my God said, uh, my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, come to the place of worship. Uh, come to the house of the Lord. Uh, and I'm going to cleanse you. I'm going to clean you. I'm going to pick you up. I'm going to turn you around. Uh, and watch the power of God open the doors in your life. Exercise the power of the Holy Ghost right now. If you have the power of the Holy Ghost, uh, let it be known. Uh, speak in tongues. Uh, let it go. Let it go. In the name of Jesus, uh, every demon that's attacking your home shall leave right now. Uh, I dispatch angels around your home uh, to fight for your family, uh, to fight for your children right now. Uh, 
any spirit uh, that's been uh, bothering you, seducing you, uh, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Uh, any sickness that is upon your body right now, uh, we cast it out in the name of Jesus. Uh, we are apostolic covered by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, we are Jesus' name, uh, saved by grace, uh, and God has given us authority uh, and dominion every anything uh, that wants to come against the body of Christ. Uh, because we are the body of Christ. We are his body. We are the body of Christ. What makes you think that God will just stand around and allow somebody to hurt his body? What makes you think as us being his body, he's going to allow the devils to come and afflict you without God taking the medication that he needs, which is the word of God in his life to address the problem? If the musicians could help me out here today, book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 4. The Bible tells us here, Christ is become of no effect unto you. Christ is become of no effect unto you. But who? Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Ye are fallen from grace. I don't want to be judged by the law. And I don't know about you, but I can't afford that. Because <laughs> I know where I'll be heading to if I get judged by the law. I'm sorry if I'm preaching to somebody that has it all in order. But your assistant pastor don't have it all in order. I can't live by the law. I can't afford to be judged by it. But I'm here because I believe and I know through his word and his apostolic doctrine that I'm under grace. And there's some of us here today that we're walking around thinking that we've been condemned already. There's some of us walking around here thinking that, you know what, our hope is lost because our loved one is lost and because this is happening and that is happening. What's going on here? And we feel that we're being judged because of the sin that we have caused and those are the, uh, are the consequences and, and, and that's the outcome of it. My God is not going to do that because that, the criminal was on the cross. So he had grace on him when he did evil his whole life. Even though we have made mistakes, saints of God, my God is not going to look at you in a way where he's going to look down at you. But he's going to look through you and see the cause of the problem, see the cause of the pain, see the cause of the hurt that's making you run to do those things that you do. Because he's going to address the problems in your life so he can heal them. So you no longer have to react the wrong way, but you can act the right way and act through the word of God, not through your feelings. And our God is here today And I don't know who needs forgiveness of their sins I don't know who needs God to wash you with his blood here today But the presence of God is moving on this altar right now And if God has been tugging on your heart This altar is open You don't got to stand up It's okay because God wants to see your action God wants to see your effort. Because if you have it all together, it's okay. You don't need to stand up. You could just sit there. But as for me and my house, we shall forever serve the Lord. Because we know that we need God in our life. I need God in my family. I need God to be with my children. I need God to be in everything that I do. But it comes with me realizing that I am a sinful man. But I need God to wash me and cleanse me. Because I am under grace. And that is what salvation is. Salvation is grace. Because we did not deserve it, saints. 
saints of God. We did not earn it, saints of God. But we have been saved in the name of Jesus because he loved us and had compassion upon us. All saints of God, come, come, come. Cast your cares upon the Lord. Let us pray for you. Let us intercede for you. And watch God open up those windows of heaven and pour the blessing upon your children. So amazing, your love for me. Isn't he amazing? It's so amazing. Isn't he amazing? Your sacrifice. What has he done for, for you? Me, for every blessing given to me. He was with you in the valley. For every valley. He was with you in the dark hours. You used to strengthen me. I don't deserve your love. Hallelujah.
I stand amazed with your power. I stand amazed with your power. So amazed. Amazed. I stand amazed. Yeah. I stand amazed with your glory. I stand amazed with your strength. I stand amazed with your strength. Your power is great, Jesus. I stand amazed with your power. So amazed.